Greetings YouTube and welcome to the Blue Corner into a card and record deck profile and this is one that I've been really hyped to do because finally I get to talk about standard Narukami and turns out this deck actually turned out to be pretty good. It was the fourth or fifth best performing deck in the Japanese format before set four came out and as far as North America goes we've had three events to my knowledge and Naras have topped all three of them. They haven't won any of them but Naras have managed to at least make a presence. Admittedly, with set four coming around the corner here, it's probably going to be a, a given that Murakumo will rise up and like just kick Narukami out of the format, and we're just going to have to wait until our wave two comes around before this deck can be back in the meta spotlight again. But it'll still be a very solid rogue deck, one of the better tier twos in my opinion. As and this might be a bit bold of me to say, but I honestly feel like Naros would be, will be the second best Axel deck in the format once Ale, uh, one, not Ale, 4, Violet's Leader drops, as I feel like we're just a better Axel deck than Great Nature and Gold Paladin, it's just that Gold Paladin has Gold Paladin numbers because they're Paladins, and Great Nature is also just popular because it, people are riding that high off of it winning worlds, but I feel like this is just more solid than they are, but that's my own opinion, I'm sure People don't agree with me on that one, but with that being said, let's get into this. So, first up, we got our starter, which is Sparky Dragoon. Rather pleased that they chose him over the other choices. And then we've got our four copies of Detonix Drill Dragon, four copies of Detonix Stinger Dragon, and one copy of Vermilion. So, I dropped Duress Clap Dragon for this guy, as it turns out that uh, I was okay. So. I still think that Vermilion is too expensive for what he does. He could have been, he should have been a Carnival One Soul Blast one, and I do believe, or, well, let's think about this because like Kagura's Dual Axe Dragon is kind of us one discard a card to nuclear back row, but you also get the uh, Sentinel Inflation ability, so I guess that's adequately costed. But I don't know. I, just, I feel like Carnival Blast two for this is still way too much, but uh, we deal with it because. Uh, Vermilion is useful in matchups where Counterblast 2 to sweep the front row is more efficient use of your resources than like Counterblasting 3 to do the same thing if you're on Drill, Stinger, with Scythe and shit. But basically against Axel decks like Murakumo, the Mirror, Great Nature, and Gold Paladin, Vermilion is a much a more useful ride that you're probably not going to be able to get very much use out of Drill's restand ability as you'd be discarding way more than you're able to make back and that's just not useful. The only time you'd really want to be like doing drill stuff is just to pick off things and get attacks off with multi with Rising Phoenix in battle phase. Then for the grade twos, for a copy of the deck, Dragonic Death Scythe. He's a pretty solid card. Soul Blast 2 though is still kind of yikes and I really hope that we get something that's just Soul Blast 1 remove and get, I don't know, plus 10k for the turn. Four copies of Breathless Dragon, he is a discount Death Scythe. And four copies of Thunderstorm Dragoon, he is the easiest enabled beat stick of the deck. As, as I mentioned in the earlier previous video in regards to these guys, you don't really call your grade ones to the back row. You either guard with them or just ever you only use them sparingly. Most of the time, your grade twos are going to be up in Axel circles. So in that case, Dusty Plasma Dragon doesn't really do anything different there. Like his power gain, like the max value you can get off of Dusty Plasma Dragon's power gain is super situational as opposed to this just being a constant 24 beater on the Axel or 14 in the early game. Like, yeah, I just feel like this is the better card between the two, but it's a moot point because once the next wave of support comes out, you're going to cut Thunderstorm Dragoon anyway. And I wouldn't be surprised if Spark Rain Dragon ends up being our go-to beater. Then moving on to the raid ones, we've got the oh-so-abusable Rising Phoenix. I Next wave of support, I hope we get another grade three that enables you to bind in battle phase. And that's pretty much all I really want because our other grade threes are pretty solid. You just cut Vermilion and maybe some copies of Stinger and call it a day. But yeah, Phoenix is absurd. You play him at four. Like I said it in the last video and it pissed off a couple of people, but I'm still going to say it again. If you're not playing four Rising Phoenix in your Narukami deck list, you are doing it wrong. This card is insane and you want to see it as soon as possible. But some people just don't understand that logic and insist, no, you should only play it at two. In any case. Four copies of Dremolition Dragon, and finally four copies of Ricky, who people still seem to misread, at least from the videos that I've watched of other people playing this deck, but again, uh, some channels are kind of notorious for their inability to read cards, such as thinking that Dectronic Stinger Dragon gives 
doesn't buff the Vanguard by 10, but calls himself out from Soul and gives himself the 10k power instead. Yeah. In any case, so, Ricky is just in here because it's like the... It's the best of the bad grade ones. And when Wave 2 comes around, this will definitely be cut. Because I imagine we'll get something that allows you to pull something up from the back row while also killing something in the front row. Or something along those lines. So basically, we just get more efficient versions of these cards. And then for the triggers, we're doing four fronts, three crits, four surprise, five draws, and four heals. Uh... Yeah, I'm doing the mixed trigger build. I was trying the seven crit build just recently. I liked how that worked, and it'll be something I can go back to. But I do like what fronts can do with this deck as well. Like, Nars are in the rather enviable position of being able to play any combination of the fronts and crits package. Some some XL decks are better at using fronts, and, and some are better at using crits. But Nars and Murakumo, I feel like, can do either or or both, and they can make them work. So, there is that, and then lastly, before we finish this up, I should probably show that I have Axel markers. So we got one generic, two generic, three generic, one uh, Pop Belly Dragon, and just one Estelle, because I just use this as a gift marker in multiple decks. So, yeah, that's pretty much all I'm going to say for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Tell me how your experiences playing with this deck are if you have been playing with Narukami and what are some ideas that you have for our Wave 2? Because I have many. I've talked about my hypothetical Descendant and my hypothetical Gaunt the Foster Dragon in the Q&A video, but I'm curious to know what other people have for ideas on what this deck would want out of its Wave 2. And of course, your own thoughts on what, does, what should our next boss monster be. I've been looking at the poll. A lot of you want Gauntlet Buster Dragon, and a lot of people want the Blood as the boss monster, which that one surprised me. And uh, Dungaree has more votes than I was hoping he'd get, and poor Armor Break Dragon only has just one vote. But yeah, that's all for now. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Until next time, this is Boost Starter 9, Jacking Out.